So Adobe has officially released Photoshop 25. It is no longer in beta and it has the generative fill in it and you can use it for commercial use, but that silver lining has a gray cloud to it because there is somewhat of a cost. It might not be evident at first. What they're gonna start doing now are these things called generative credits. And depending on the type of plan that you have, you'll get so many generative credits that you can use every month. And when you run out, you have to pay for more. Now, you may know from previous episodes I've done on AI is that this was inevitable. This was something that you would have to see coming from any AI manufacturer because they have to compensate their people providing the images that their machine is learning from. In the case of Adobe, they were using Adobe stock. So because of that, it makes it safe to use for commercial use because they own the rights to this stuff. They weren't scraping the web like uh, Mid Journey or ChatGPT. But all those Adobe stock contributors do need to be compensated for this. So they're still working out the details on that, but some of these uh, plans that you get through Creative Cloud, some of them only come with about 100 generative credits. And that means that you use some generative fill, you get a credit dinged off you. That's fine. You do 100 of those a month, you don't have to pay for it. But what if you don't like it? What if you don't even bother using what it generated? Well, they still ding you for it because, or at least right now, because that's a cost on their end for their machines to do it. Generative AI is not running local on your machine, it's running in the cloud. So that also means that if a lot of people are using it at the same time, it might slow down also what you're doing. But the biggest thing, it's really the generative credits. It doesn't come free. And quite honestly, some of what it's putting out I don't know if I'd really pay for, especially since there's alternatives like using the remove tool, which it's run by AI, and you don't have to worry about generative credits. So I wanted to go through a little bit of this in this episode. Everybody has seen about a hundred different episodes on YouTube about how great generative AI fill is in Photoshop, in the beta but it really falls short of a lot of expectations, especially when doing real estate photography. I'm gonna show a little bit of that here. And also, would you really use it? Is it really worth paying those extra credits for compared to just using other tools? So I'm just gonna step through a few things just real quick to kind of show you what this is, but you can also then just check your Creative Cloud plan, update this if you want to. Once again, it is an official release of Photoshop 25. So in Photoshop, you'll see something new. It's the contextual text bar. And you might've seen this in the beta. It's this bar here. If you don't see it, then you can go up to window and then turn it on or off with contextual task bar there. Now with this, it'll show up anytime you're trying to do something with, let's say a fill. Uh, let's take this picture for example. If I take and just draw a polygon around here saying that I wanna change out that picture, this changes the generative fill. Now there's other things that you can do on this contextual taskbar, like adding a new adjustment layer, whatnot. But here we'll do generative fill and I can either leave this blank and say generate, but in this case, I wanna describe what it is. So I would like to have a, a beach scene and we'll put some seagulls in it. So beach scene with seagulls flying. And let's see what it does. So after you're done with that, and if I can type that correctly, beach scene with seagulls flying, and you would click generate, and then it'll go out to the cloud, do its thing, and I've got this ginormous picture over here of a seagull flying into the room. <laughs> now, is that really what I wanna pay a generative credit for? Well, I've got some other options. So I've got this option, which I have no idea why this bent. Well, I actually do. It's because if you take a look, the frame of the bed was bent. So AI figured that this must be bent to the frame. And looking here, that might be doable. But for the most part, I'm really not all that impressed with it. But there are some things that do come in handy when it comes to this. Now, I could obviously just change out that picture myself. I could just take some other picture of mine, put it over top of here if I wanted to. I could use virtual staging software, whatever. Those are easy, easy things to do. But let's take a look at something more difficult.
So this is something I run across all the time when I'm shooting commercial buildings. You'll run across this, I'm sure, uh, when you're doing real estate listings for houses where there are cars and driveways. And in this case, yeah, we've got a truck over here I'd really like to get rid of and also this car. And then we've got this semi over here. So let's go over here and tackle this truck first. So what I'll do is I'll go over here and I'm gonna use a polygon and I'm gonna draw a polygon around this truck. I'm gonna make sure that I get its shadow so I can get everything with that truck. Once I'm done, in this case, when I select generative fill, I just select generate. No descriptions, that basically means just fill in based on what's around the background, kind of like a content aware fill. Once it's done doing its generative AI in the cloud, I have this result. Notice it's a new layer. That's why I can just shut the layer on and off and see what was there. I also have three options. So I can say, does this one look better? Does that one look better? And that one, I'd actually use that as the candidate. I would say that looks really good. So to me, that was worth definitely the credit. Let's get rid of this other car real quick, and then we're really gonna tackle that big semi and see how well it does. So I'll take this car right here, draw a polygon, and once again, do generative fill, and then just select generate and let it do its thing in the cloud. So that did a really good job. My polygon didn't quite get that end of the mirror, but I could easily just clone that out. And I have this option and that option as well. So I'd probably go with the first option. Let's zoom all the way out here. And now things aren't looking too bad. This is what it was before. This is with it after. So I'll just move this out of the way a little bit so we can see that again, this is after, this is before. Okay, so, so far this has cost me two generative credits. Now, of course, those take effect in November, so I'm not worried about it right now, but whatever. Anyways, let's take a look now at removing this big old semi trailer over here. Now, that's a big, Thing to remove a lot of stuff around it so let's give it a shot go down here to our layer and then that has it on there use the polygon tool and i'll then select around this trailer i'm going to try to get somewhat close to it while i'm still getting the shadow go in here close that and then on the contextual taskbar generative fill nothing just say generate and it didn't do too bad of a job on the first scenario. Let's zoom out here a little bit so we can get a better idea of it. So this is the layer on the first scenario. And if I go to this layer, it brings up this little properties dialog box. I could take a look at the second option, which is a little bit better. And then there's this third option, which I just wouldn't use. But one of these is probably good. I'd probably use this one. And then I've got a good starting base to at least start finishing off the edit to make the rest of this then fill in. So that made my life probably a little easier by doing this. So once again, with that, and now using three generative credits to make that happen, then before and after. But the key here is generative credits. Now, this is the plan that a lot of photographers have. It's the photography plan, 10 bucks a month, 20 gigabytes of storage, and you get Lightroom and Photoshop, which for our case doing real estate photography, it's really Lightroom Classic and Photoshop that we care about. But notice now that Adobe Firefly is included because that's what's implemented into the generative AI. So all of your other stuff that you get at the very bottom, you get 250 monthly generative credits. So that's not too bad for that plan. If you have the one terabyte storage plan for their cloud, then you're gonna be paying $20 a month and you get 500 monthly generative credits. Now, if you are using a single app, for instance, just using Lightroom, then you're only gonna have 100 monthly generative credits, which kind of makes sense because you probably wouldn't need to use generative fill. You don't even have Photoshop. But if you have more apps, and this is where if you had all the creative cloud apps, and this is where you pay $55 a month, well, it's probably worth it. You get a thousand monthly generative credits. So in a way that's, that's somewhat fair, but if you only have the photography plan, then you get 250 monthly generative credits. Now, will that work? Well, if, if you're an editor and you do item removal every day for other photographers, you're gonna run out of credits in no time. There's no doubt about that. So if you're a photographer doing your own editing and you're not gonna always run across a lot of item removal, then this probably would work well. But as I showed in this last example, I have three different generative credits dinged from me because I had to do this three different times. Could I have done them all in the same time? 
I probably could have, but doing these in pieces allowed me to get a separate layer for each one. Another thing to bear in mind is since generative credits are involved here, is to really consider how much you're going to charge your customers then for item removal. So you can just figure that into the cost of so that you can have enough generative credits. What that also means then is you probably don't want to use this as a toy because it's going to come at a cost. So professional work, sure, you can use it for that. Now, is it really getting us the resolution that we want? Well, let's also zoom in here 100%. So if we go in at 100%, we can see that the before picture, probably no loss in detail. It was a little soft here in the corner anyways. So that really didn't have any impact on you. See, that's where I forgot the mirror there. Let's go over here to the, uh, to the dock and what's going on here on the building. And the before picture, it was definitely sharper. You can see here by adding this in there, we definitely have some softness. Now, is it really noticeable? Well, to some degree, yes. I can see softness all around here. So depending on what you're doing, you still don't have necessarily the high resolution that you might expect. But this is obviously going to change. Right now it is in full production release. It has been tested, so it's no longer in beta. It's safe to install. It is safe to use also for commercial use. I'm sure they'll improve this over time. And as they do, and there are more updates and how you can utilize this best for your photography work, I'll keep you posted.